The Cube presents KubeCon and CloudNativeCon Europe 2022. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and its ecosystem partners. Welcome to Valencia, Spain, and KubeCon, CloudNativeCon Europe 2022. I'm your host, Keith Townsend, and we're continuing the conversation with community, with startups, with people building Cloud Native, a Clute Cube alum joined by a CTO, and not as the CTO advisor, I really appreciate talking to CTOs. Capel Thung Valu, uh, don't, forgive me if I murdered the name, that's a tough one, I'm, I'm, I'm getting warmed up to the cube seat, but don't <laughs> worry, when we get to the technical parts, it's going to be fun. <laughs> and then a cube alum, Umer Khan, Director of Marketing, Kapil, you're the CTO, so we'll, we'll start out with you. What's the problem statement? What, what, what are you guys doing? So, uh, we're building on top of an open source project, Cloud Custodian, uh, that is in CNCF, and that I built when I was at Capital One, and just as they were going, they're taking those first few steps, it's a large regulated enterprise into the cloud. And the challenge that I saw was, you know, how do we enable developers to pick whatever tools and technologies they want, if they want to use Terraform or CloudFormation or Ansible, I mean, the cloud gives us APIs. And we want to be able to enable people to use those APIs through innovative ways, uh, but at the same time, we want to make sure that the, regardless of what choices those developers make, that the organization is being, is being well managed, that all those resources, all that infrastructure is complying to the organizational policies. And what we saw at the time was that what we were getting impediments around our velocity into the cloud because we had to cover off on all of the compliance and regulation aspects, and we were doing that them as one-offs. And so, uh, taking a step back, I realized that what we really needed was a way to go faster on the compliance side, and Clock Custodian was born out of that effort, as a side of desk that we took through enterprise-wide, and it was really about um, accelerating the velocity around compliance, but doing it in the same way that we do application and infrastructure as code. So, doing policy as code in a very simple, readable YAML DSL, um, because, you know, you have, we, anytime we write code, we're going to, more people are going to read that code than, than are going to need to be able to write it. And so being able to make it really easy to understand from both the developers that are in the environment, from the compliance folks or auditors or security folks that might want to review it, um, it was super important. And then, instead of being, at the time we saw lots of vendor products and they were all just big walls of red in somebody's corner or office. And getting that to actually back in, information back in the hands of developers so that they can fix things, um, was problematic. So being able to do real-time remediation and real-time collaboration and communication back to developers. Hey, you put a database on the internet, it's okay, we fixed it for you, and here's the corporate policy on how to do it better in the future. So this is an area of focus of mine that people, I think, don't get right a lot. The technology, hard enough by itself. The transformation, cloud is not just about adopting new technologies, but adopting new processes. The data and information is there automatically, but when I go to an auditor or, or a compliance and say, hey, we've changed the process for how do we do change control for our software stack, I get a blank stare. It's, what do you mean? We've been doing it this way for the past 15, 20 years. That's resistance, it's a pain point, and projects fail due to this issue. So, talk to me about that initial customer engagement. What's, what's that conversation like? So, we start off by deploying our, our platform on top of Cloud Custodian, um, and as far as our customers, and we give them a view of all the things that are in their cloud, what is their baseline, so to speak. Um, but I think it's really important, like I think you bring up a good point, like communication, the, the challenge, larger challenge for, for enterprises in the cloud and especially with regards to compliance, is understanding that it is not a steady state. It's always, there's always something new in the backlog. And so, being able, and the, one of the challenges for larger orgs is just being able to communicate out what that is. I remember changing a tag policy and sp spending the next two years explaining it to people what the actual tag policy was. Um, and so, being able to actually inform them, you know, via email, via Slack, via, you know, any communication mechanism, uh, as they're doing things, it is so powerful to be able to, to help the organization grow together and move and get in alignment about what, what, the, what the new things are. And then additionally, 
you know, from a perspective of uh, tooling that is built for the real world, like being able to, as those new policies come into play, being able to say, okay, we're going to segment into stopping the bleeding on the net new, and being able to then take action on what's already deployed that now needs to become into compliance is, is really important. But coming back to your question on customer engagements, so we'll go in and we'll deploy uh, a SACWIT platform for them. We'll basically show them all of the things that are there already in Extant. Um, we provide a real-time SQL interface that customers can use um, that is an asset inventory of all their cloud assets. Uh, and then we provide uh, policy packs that sort of cover off on compliance, security, cost optimizations, and opportunities for them. Uh, and then we help them through uh, GitOps around those policies, help deploy remediation activities and capabilities for their environment. So walk me through some of the detail of, of, of the process and where the software helps and where people need to step in. I'm making, I'm, I'm talking to my security auditor and he's saying, you know what, Keith, I understand that the AWS, that the uh, VM talking to, the application VM talking to the Oracle database, there is a firewall rule that says if that can happen, show me that rule and cloud custodian, and you're trying to explain, well, well, there's no longer a firewall. There's a service, and the service is talking to that, and it, it's here in cloud custodian, and Stacklet is, where does Stacklet help come to either help with the conversation, or where do I inject more of my experience and my ability to negotiate with the auditor? So, Stacklet, from the auditor perspective, uh, and if we take a step back, we, we talked about governance as code and, and the four pillars around compliance, security, cost optimization, operations uh, that we help organizations do. But if we take a step back, what is Cloud Custodian? Cloud Custodian is really a cloud orchestrator, a resource orchestrator. What Sacklet provides on top of that is UI, UX, um, policy packs, at scale execution across thousands of accounts. But in the context of an auditor, what we're really providing is, here's the policy that we're enforcing, and here's the evidence, the attestation over time, and here's the resource database with history that shows how we, how we got here. Were we compliant last year to this policy that we just wrote today? So, shifting the conversation, you just mentioned operations. One of the larger conversations that I have with CIOs and CTOs is where do I put my people? Like, this is a really tough challenge. When you look at moving to something like an SRE model, or uh, let's even focus on the SRE, like what, where does the SRE sit in an organization? How does that, like, if at all, help me make those types of strategic decisions, if I'm talking about governance overall? But, so I think uh, in terms of personas, if you look at, there's a cloud engineer, then an SRE, I think that what at, at its core, Stacklet and Cloud Custodian does is a centralized engine, right? So your so cost policies, your compliance policies, your security policies are not in a silo anymore. It's one tool, it's one repository that everyone can collaborate on as well. And even engineering, a lot of engineering teams run Custodian and, and adopt Custodian as well. So in terms of persona, Stacklet really helps bring it together. All teams have the same simple YAML DSL file that they can write their policies, share their policies, and communicate and collaborate better as well. Kapil, anything on that? Yeah, so I mean, cloud transformation for an, an enterprise is a, a deeper topic. Like I think, you know, there's a lot of good best practices, establishing a cloud center of excellence. Um, I, I think, you know, investing in training for people, uh, getting certification so everyone can speak the same language when it comes to cloud is a key aspect. When it comes to the operations aspect, I very much believe that you should have, you know, try to devolve and get the developers writing uh, some of the DevOps, and so having SREs around for the actual application teams is, is valuable, but you still have a core cloud infrastructure engineering group that's doing potentially any of your core networking, any of your uh, you know, IAM authentication aspects, and so uh, what we found is that you know, Sacklet and Cloud Custodian get primarily get deployed by one of three groups. They, uh, you know, you've got the, the CIO buyer within that cloud infrastructure engineering team. And what we found is that group is, because they're working with the application teams in a read-write way, uh, they're very much more um, uh, used to doing, and, and open to doing remediation in real time. Um, and so, and then we also have the, the, C, the CISO teams that want to get to a secure compliance state, be able to do audit and, and validate that all the environments are um, you know, secure, frankly. And then we get to the CFO groups. Uh, and so, and this 
it sometimes is part of the Cloud Center of Excellence, and so it, it has to be this cross-team collaboration. And they're really focused on the, that, that cost optimization, finding the over-provision, underutilized things, establishing workloads for dev environments to turn them off at night, um, and of course, respective of time zones, because we're all global these days. Uh, and so, those are sort of the three groups that we see that sort of really want to engage with us because we can provide value for them to help their accelerate their business goals. So, that's an expansive view. Cost, compliance, security, operations. That's a lot. I'm thinking about all the tools, all the information that feeds into that. Where does cloud custodians start and stop? Like, am I putting cloud custodian agents on servers or uh, pods? Like, how, how am I interacting so with this? So, the core cloud custodian is just a CLI. It's stateless. It's designed to be operationally simple. Um, and so you can run it in Kubernetes, in Jenkins. We've seen people use GitLab. We've seen people run just as a query interactive tool just from um, investigations perspective on their laptop. But when you write a policy, a policy really consists of you know, a couple of core elements. Uh, you identify a resource you want to target, say an S3 bucket or uh, a Google Cloud VM, and then you say you establish a set of filters. I want to look for all the EC2 instances that are on public subnets with an IAM role attached that has the ability to uh, create another IAM user. And so that, you know, you filter down, you ask the arbitrary questions to filter to the interesting set of things you want, and then you take a set of actions on them. So you might take an action like stop an EC2 instance, and you might use it as an incident response, um, you might uh, use it for off hours in, a, in that type of policy. So you get this library of filters and actions that you can combine to form you know, millions of different types of policies. Now, we also have this notion of an execution mode. So you might say, uh, let's operate in real time whenever someone launches an instance, whenever there's an API call. We want to introspect what that API call is doing and make sure that it's compliant to policy. Now when you do that, Custodian will, when you, and you run it with the CLI, Custodian will actually provision a Lambda function and hook up the event sources to it, uh, and sorry, Lambda, really the serverless, we bind to the serverless native capabilities of the underlying cloud provider. The Google Cloud function, Azure serverless functions, uh, and AWS Lambda and AWS. And so now that policy is effectively hermetically sealed, running uh, in the serverless runtime of that cloud and responding to API calls in real time. All with you know, structured outputs and logs and metrics to the native uh, cloud provider capabilities around those, um, and that really, ensures that uh, you know, it's effectively becomes operation free from the perspective of the user of having to maintain infrastructure for it. So let's talk so about- agentless and API based. Let's talk about like the, a non-developer use case, specifically finance. The, Absolutely. We, you have the, deploy, the ability to deploy a, 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 a SAP in a uh, EC2 instance, but it's very expensive do it only when you absolutely need to do it, but you have the rights to do it, and I want to run a, uh, a check to see if anyone's doing it. Like, this, is, this isn't a colder developer. What is their experience? So, so primarily we focus on, on the infrastructure. So load balancers, VMs, you know, encryption at rest on disks. Um, when we get into the application workloads running on those instances, we, spend, we, we don't spend that, that's not our fo target focus area. Mm -hmm. We can do it, uh, and it really depends on the underlying cloud provider's capabilities. So in Amazon, there's a system called Systems Manager, and, it runs, and it's basically running an agent on the box. We're not running the agent, but we can communicate with that agent, we can introspect the, the inventory that's running on that box, we can send commands to that box through those serverless functions and through those policies. And so, we see it commonly used for like incident response in a security perspective where you might want to take a, a memory snapshot of, of, of the instance before uh, t um, yeah. putting it into a forensic yeah, And adding to that, like the, these days we're seeing the emerging personas of a FinOps engineer or a FinOps director as well because cost in cloud is totally different. So what Custodian and Stackler allows to do is again using the simple policy files, even if they have a non-developer background, they can understand this DSL, they can create policies, they can better uh, target developers better get them to take actions on policy as well. If they're overspending in the cloud or underspending in the cloud, uh, especially with Stacklet, you get they get a lot of out of the box dashboards and policy packs too. So say, they can really understand how the cost has been consumed.
removed, they can have the developers take actions because a lot of the FinOps finance people complain, like my developers does not understand, it, right? How do we get them to take action and make sure we're not overspending, right? So with custodian policies, they're able to send them uh, educational messages on Slack or open a Jira ticket and really enforce them to take action as well and start saving cost. Like if you uh, if you imagine cloud custodian as um, you know cleaning staff for for the <laughs> your your cloud environment, like it, it's uh, you know if you go to a typical you know cloud account, you're going to see chairs that are ten feet tall sitting at the table. You're going to because it's been over provisioned and then obviously you no know, one can use it. Um, you're going to find like the trash is overflowing because no one set up a log retention policy on the log group or set up S3 uh, lifecycle rules on their buckets, and so you just have this. Um, sort of this, uh, this explosion of things that people now, you know, beyond application functioning, like beyond you know, getting to you know, high performance, DR capable uh, SLAs around your application model, you now have to worry about the life cycle of all of those resources and helping people manage that life cycle and making sure that they're using the, the, just the resources and consumption that they need because we're all utilization based. Uh, in the cloud, and so getting that to be more in line with what the application actually needs is really where we can help organizations in the CFO cost so, context. So, Emil, you got 10 seconds to tell me why you brought me a comic book. <laughs> we created this comic book uh, to explain the concept of governance as code in a simplified fashion. I know, Keith, you like comic books, I believe. Uh, so it's a simple way of describing what we do, why it's important for FinOps, for SecOps teams, and it talks about custodian and Stacklet as well. Well, I'm more of an Iron Man type of guy <laughs> or Batman. Cloud governance or governance in general, cloud native governance is a very tough problem. I can't underemphasize how many projects get stalled or fail from a perception perspective, even if you're technically delivered what you've asked to deliver. That's where a lot of these conversations are going. We're going to talk to a bunch of startups that are solving these tough problems here from Valencia, Spain, I'm Keith Townsend, and you're watching The Cube, the leader in high-tech coverage. Mm -hmm.